Hi, I'm Random Trashy, and welcome to the channel. So today's video is all about the difference between Airsoft and Milsim. Um, I always find it very difficult trying to explain to people what Airsoft is from the point, you know, from the from the very beginning, um, when someone's never come across it before, and then trying to explain what the difference between, let's say, a typical Airsoft, say, skirmish player would do, and what a Milsim player would cover as well. So I don't want this to turn into a big flame fest. I don't think that there is a right or a wrong, or one thing that you should do over another. I think people will, you know, can go and enjoy both types of games but it's just the difference between the two is what I'm interested in so explaining airsoft to people is always really difficult especially as I'm getting on a little bit I'm nearly 30 so when I tell people that I run around with kind of toy guns shooting at all my friends um, they kind of think it's a little bit immature a little bit childish when I show them the photos of some of the Milsim events most people are absolutely blown away when they see you know a big Wimmick with a 50 cow on the top you know pictures like this with my team look really really cool um, and I think then they're a little bit more accepting. So for me, for the very basics, explaining airsoft is, is quite difficult. I always say it's like paintball, but a much better version of it. I think it's better because of the type of weapons that you have, the diversity, and also the massive variety of airsoft that's out there. Paintball is paintball. You don't really get a paintball event over 72 hours um, with loads of vehicles and that sort of thing. It doesn't really happen. They're always focused around speed a lot of the time. Um, international higher tier competitions, um, such as one of my good friends, Matt, you know, he used to play in international competitions for paintball and it was all about rushing the objective, getting there fast, you know, massive rates of fire on the guns and, you know, just suppressing the enemy so that you can get to the objective. Um, I think Airsoft take that takes that a lot further. I think that they do a lot more with Airsoft and I think the surroundings are a lot more diverse, you know, playing woodland, playing urban environments, you know, there's all sorts of stuff going on, people playing in bunkers, playing on military sites now. Obviously the Americans have taken that really, really far, you can do all sorts of things, you know, uh, Airsoft zombie experiences, survival stuff, um, stuff, moving from vehicles and, you know, moving between vehicles. I've seen helicopters used in Airsoft and everything. So it's really, really diverse. Um, I guess moving that forward, the conversation, you know, obviously, again, guys, if you have any opinions, drop them in the box below. An airsofter for me is someone that plays a typical skirmish type day, let's say a nine in the morning till four o'clock in the afternoon style game. Um, and that's sometimes broken down into a few different sessions and the game orientated task. So the actual task itself, what the teams have to complete are normally a single objective and that wins the game. So let's say, for example, um, I'm a blue team there's a red team and the objective is to get to a barrel on the site and you fight towards that barrel. Once that one objective is complete, that is kind of the team win. Um, with Milsim, I see the massive difference is it being about an individual task and all of the teams that are broke down from, let's say, you know, I'm the red team and we're broken down into five squads. Each of those five squads may have an individual task. For that team to win, it takes all five smaller teams to complete their task or at least, you know, accomplish part of their task. And I've been out on a lot of sessions and a lot of um, Milsim operations and taskings where we haven't shot at one person. It was to go out and observe. It was to go out and, um, you know, get into a position, make a firing position, make sure that we are observing some point of contact between the enemy. And... I think if you're an impatient player, Milsim might not be for you. But also, you know, there's a lot of players out there that just don't want to do that style of game. They want to go out, high rates of fire, high cap magazines, go down, blitz tons of rounds using HPA mags, uh, HPA guns, and you know, really high powered guns with high rates of fire, and they're just in the CQB punishing people with BBs. You're fine with Milsim players. You can't really do that. You could be out on the ground for anywhere from. 20 minutes to five six hours you can't blitz guns you can't have these high rate of fire guns because you just tear through batteries so you also find you know they're a lot more conservative with their rounds you know and you really want a gun that is a high torque single shot gun that can just take someone out with a blip of the trigger and allow you to progress on uh, into your tasking so i think the styles of play, play the equipment differs between the two um, and the way that people approach the event you know, it's completely different. You know, me, my team, um, some of us are preparing for our weekenders, 72 hour, 48 hour events, you know, two weeks beforehand, you know, we're prepping food, you know, we may be out on the ground the whole time, we've got to be aware of every weather type, you know, if you're out and you get soaking wet the first couple of hours of being there, if you haven't got a spare set of kit or you haven't got a wet set of kit, um, 
you know, to protect you from the rain. You may be in that kit all weekend, which is going to be very uncomfortable. So it's really a lot of preparation goes into Milsim, whereas I see airsoft events, you know, a lot of guys turn up in quite loose, quite baggy clothing. It allows them to move very quickly. It allows them to be very agile and quick on their feet, carrying very lightweight rigs a lot of the time, you know, chest rigs. So they've got mags in their pockets and stuff. Um, and they go and just play the objective and they're, they're out to kind of have fun. It seems that skirmish days are a lot more orientated around the younger crowd and, you know, people going out there and really enjoying themselves. Now, if you are an old uh, guy, you know, you're a guy that plays it a bit slower or, you know, there is any anything that you feel that I'm saying wrong here, please feel free to correct me. You know, I don't know everything. I just want to get your opinion on some stuff, some of this stuff. So, you know, for me, I am a Milsim player. I, I enjoy the Milsim side of it. I, you know, I've, I, I enjoy going out on patrols and, you know, sometimes coming under no contact. You know, we was uh, looking after a friend of ours, Steady, at the weekend, and he was out banging doors. You know, he was interviewing people and speaking to people and gathering intelligence. We didn't come under fire for hours. We were out walking around, making sure that he's protected, keeping an eye on all of the perimeters and horizons. You know, there was a riot at one point, and we had to stay calm during that and not attack anyone. You know, they were unarmed civilians, but they were rioting, and we couldn't do anything about it. So it puts your brain in a lot of you know, uneasy circumstances with Milsim and sometimes they do that to really unsettle you and it really does work. Um, you know, I was a couple of times I looked at my two IC, his name's Sam, and I was kind of panicking, you know, my finger was edging towards that trigger and he was keeping me calm, you know, and people rushing towards us, hiding in loads of places, in and out of buildings. We didn't know if they had booby traps, you know, if they had weapons in those doorways and you know the second you turn your head you're really ready to get slotted and I was a bit uneasy and I'm not gonna you know, not gonna lie and I think Milsim really does that. I think and the more you give to Milsim, um, the more involved you are, the more you immerse yourself, the better the experience is, you know. Went out on some night ops, you know, it's pitch black, had the night vision on, we were jumping in and out of vehicles, raiding buildings, steaming all of the floors, um, you know, killed a few people in their sleep. You have to be aware 24 hours with Milsim as well, you know, you have to sleep with your glasses on because it's very easy for guys to get in buildings and attack you and a couple of shots and, you know, normally a little nudge and you get woke up and you get told you're dead and you're either being captured or you've got, you know, a bleed out rule or something like that. So I see some massive differences, but I really like that about Milsim. I couldn't see myself going to, you know, an event where it's all about speed and just got to rush onto an objective and, you know, you capture a flag or something and then, you know, the game's over and then you spin it round or start in different areas or, you know, start over ends of the field, that sort of thing. It really doesn't kind of do anything for me as a, as a player, but... I really seem to get a lot back from the Milsim. Um, I recently done one like last weekend. Uh, I was out of all my guys all weekend. You know, it's great bonding, all sorts of weather. You know, it's 27 degrees Saturday. Then it rained. Then it was storm. Massive big bolts of lightning across the sky. I got some awesome photos. So I'll throw a couple up here while I'm talking. Uh, really, really cool photos from a guy called Guy Butler fantastic airsoft photography i'll put a link to him in the box below so i know it's kind of going off on a tangent but you know what what, what are your opinions let's you know, I'll wrap this up you know what do you see the difference between airsoft and milsim what do you prefer and why um, and what sort of loadout do you run for it so uh, i am on facebook if you want to send me some pictures and stuff like that be included in you know an upcoming video then feel free to do that uh, if you do have anything you want to ask me again you know if it's about milsim um you know what to do how to prepare you know stuff to take then drop a comment in the box below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted it to be kind of a two-way thing. I really want to get some feedback on this. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope to, uh, you know, really look forward to seeing the feedback in the comments box below and I will see you all soon.